Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme six, element six, water consumption. Get out your revision guides. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. The demand for water across the globe is higher now than it has ever been before. With more people on the planet and an increase in the number of factories which require water for production, available water sources are under increased pressure. Due to this increased global demand, not everyone has sufficient access to a clean water supply. And, in addition, we find that as a result of both factory demand and consumerism, HICs are using more water than LICs. So let's have a look at that disparity in a bit more detail. So this idea of, does everyone have equal access to water? And we can firmly say that no, people don't. And there's a few patterns that do persist throughout the world. So while water consumption can vary from country to country, it does vary within the country as well. So if you live in a rural area, particularly in LICs, your water access is going to be reduced. And that's because the infrastructure is more costly to put into place. And if there's not as many people living out there, then the infrastructure is probably not going to be developed because it just wouldn't serve as many people. So the urban areas tend to have piped water supplies and in the rural areas, they don't. So that would mean that they'd have to go to natural water sources which may have been polluted. Those living in informal settlement, settlements, so we call those shanty towns or squatter settlements, don't have pipe water supplies at all because they're an illegal settlement. It hasn't been built by the government or sanctioned by the government, so it's not going to have access to piped water, electricity or anything like that. So instead, residents would have to purchase bottled water or find other sources of water. Again, probably the local rivers. But because informal settlements are mostly inside urban areas, those rivers are almost guaranteed to be polluted. So access to water in rural areas and in squatter settlements is where we find the, the most discrepancy. However, the wider pattern is one of HIC versus HIC. So the amount of water that a person consumes is called the water footprint. The graph on the right hand side here shows the difference between water footprints in a selection of countries colour coded by whether they're a HIC or an LIC. You can see quite clearly that HICs are consuming a lot more water than LICs. So if we have a look at some examples here, we've got the USA they're consuming 1,600 cubic meters of water per year per person. If we contrast that with Botswana, they're consuming around 100 cubic meters of water per person per year. So in effect, what's happening is the USA is actually using more water per month than Botswana's using in an entire year. And the reasons for that are largely down to two factors. One is economic and the other is access. So in HICs, like the UK, we've got piped, clean, safe water to the home. So we're more likely to take that for granted and waste it. So let the water run down the sink while we're brushing our teeth or while you're cleaning, washing up in the sink in the kitchen. We also have more disposable income. So that would mean money that would not be used for bills and can be used for leisure activities. So we might more likely to own more than one car and those cars need washing, or we own a garden and that garden needs watering. But it can also be things outside of the home as well. So it could be that your leisure activities, you go to the swimming pool. It could be that we eat more food and all food has water in it as well, or has been produced using water, which we call embedded water. All of this adds up to our water footprint. On the other hand, in the LICs, water is a more valuable commodity. It's not as easy to come by, so they're not going to take that for granted. So if you've got to travel to get that water, and there's only a finite amount of it, you're only going to use it for the bare essentials that you need to use that water for. And that would be to consume, to drink, and in food preparation. So that, in is coupled with the availability of water and the desperate need for it for very specific reasons. And finally, we come onto this idea of water security. 
So water security is the availability and the quality of the water throughout the year. So in some countries, like where we live, we've got a very high water security. We can almost guarantee that if you turn the tap on at any point in the day, at any point in the year, that you will get clean, safe water to drink right there, right then. But it's not always the case in other countries, particularly in LICs and particularly in rural areas of LICs, you cannot guarantee that there will always be water available and that it is safe water to drink. It could be because there's a dry season so that they have periods of drought so that lakes don't refill, don't recharge. Or it could be to do with having poor environmental laws and pollutions taking place within the rivers so the quality of the water is reduced as well. But this can also take an economic aspect. So even in the UK, water is piped to the home but only if you pay for it. So in effect, there's water available but you are unable to pay for it, so you're unable to access it. Well, that's it for today, but continue your revision in your own time by completing the Now Try It tasks for homework. Class dismissed.